All right, well, welcome back to the channel. Um, this isn't a nugget from scripture. This isn't the one uh, step to freedom addiction ministry video. Uh, this is just another video. It does have scripture that goes with it, um, but it's something that uh, I did some study on and, and, and uh, I'm hoping that um, it brings some clarification to some people because it's something that I never paid attention to really in my reading. Um, I just kind of thought it all mushed together and was all the same. Uh, but it's something that I never paid attention to until I really started studying, until I started taking some some classes and uh, um, these things came up. Uh, the topic is, because otherwise it just seems really convoluted, the topic is, uh, what is the name of God? Um, like I said, it, 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 everybody always... Uh, I, I won't say everybody always, because not everybody always, but a lot of people, a lot of times, will use the words Lord, God, Jesus, and Christ, all four of them synonymously. Now, while they are all uh, representative to um, our God, to the God of the Bible, there are differences in them. Um, and it wasn't, like I said, until I started studying, and then I started listening to a lot of Pastor Chuck's sermons, and he, he, he explained it then, too, and it was like, oh, wow, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. For instance, uh, you know, if you read in the Old Testament, you see the word Lord, um, all capital letters, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Why is that capitalized in some places, and why is Lord maybe just with a capital L in other places? They're both referring to God, right? Because it'll say our Lord Jesus Christ, or it will say the Lord God, you know, uh, our, the Lord Jesus Christ, capital, all capital letters in Lord, or maybe capital L and lowercase letters at the for the last three, or, um, you know, it'll say the Lord God, uh, all capital letters, and then, you know, the word God. What, what does all that mean? So I just wanted to kind of talk about that today, and, and it kind of came up again, too, just as I'm... As I've been listening to Pastor Chuck and I've been doing some study uh, for um, just kind of like a an inductive Bible study that I'm doing through the book of James, um, and and the the topic, the verse that came for this is James chapter one, verse one, the first half of the first verse, and it just says James, <coughs> excuse me, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so a lot of times, and I fully admit that um, this was me uh, at some points in my life uh, up until I really started studying that uh, maybe we would believe that uh, the Lord is the first name, Jesus is his middle name, and Christ is his last name. Although if you were to pay attention to the scriptures hardly at all, you would know that that's, this, this cannot be the case because sometimes uh, you will see um, this in different in a different order. It will, you know, say Jesus Christ, our Lord, or Jesus Christ, the Lord. Uh, you might see the Lord Jesus Christ, or uh, you might, you know, see the words separate, the Christ. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't call me the Rob. So if Christ is his last name, you wouldn't be called the Christ, but he is, he, he has in the Bible called the Christ. So that would have to lead that it's not his last name. But, um, and there's no condemnation, no conviction, uh, or, or uh, uh, not talking trash to anybody that doesn't know these things. Because I said, I think that there's a lot of people that this is confusing to. Uh, I know to me it was. So we're just going to get right into this. Um, I want to try to make this short and sweet. Uh, so James chapter 1, verse 1, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a bond servant. He's a slave uh, to uh, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God, Elohim, the first word in, uh, or uh, the first time that God is mentioned in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. First uh, first verse, first mention of God. God um, is, um, the word in Greek is, is theos. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, it is Elohim. Uh, Elohim is a plural word, so this is the, um, uh, the first Mentioned if you study, you wouldn't see this in English, but if you study back through the words in uh, the Hebrew, you would see that God is a plural world, a plural world, it's Elohim, and that uh, points towards the Trinity. Um, the three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all one, 
all separate but all one. Neither one is more the other than the other one, but all separate, all one, and all are God. Um, and then later on in Genesis uh, chapter 2, um, you can see, uh, and God said, let us make man in our image, indicating that there was uh, more than one person, more than one uh and not more than one God, but more than one person of the body of God. And even in um, verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, uh, the spirit I think it's verse 2, the, the Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the water. So we have God, we have the Spirit, we have the reference to let's make man in, in our own image, which would be plural, our, our is plural. Um, yeah, this, is, this is the God, the same God, the Theos, because uh, the, the New Testament, James is in Greek, the Theos, this is the same God, this is the plural for this, um, and basically, uh, God is uh, the designator, the designator of um, the supreme divinity, the, 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 the supreme sovereign divine power and authority over the universe. Outside of space, time, and matter, he can't be within side space, time, and matter, because if he was inside space, time, and matter, then uh, he couldn't have created uh, what he created because he can't be inside matter if matter hasn't been created yet. He has to be outside of these things. Scripture says that, um, you know, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day to God. He's outside of time. Um, he's outside of time, space, and matter. These were all construct, uh, things constructed by him. He's a supreme, uh, the supreme uh, divine being. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the Lord uh, in... The Greek, I believe this is the Greek, I didn't write this down, but the Lord in the Greek is Kyrios, and, and that is uh, supreme in authority, uh, or the master. Um, you can find in the Old Testament, and let me go uh, find it real quick, because this is something that I was reading just earlier doing some other study. Uh, Genesis chapter 42, this is just an example, and you can find this a lot when it comes to the word Lord. The Lord is not a, a reference to, um, it's not like a proper, it's not a proper name for God because there are other lords. Genesis 42, 33, um, uh, let's see. Uh, it says, then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, and this is the Lord of the country, uh, it was referring um, to Joseph. Uh, this is when Joseph's brothers re returned to Can uh, Canaan. This is the backstory in this. Um, uh, and um, they're telling the story to the father. It says, the, then, the man, the Lord, the, then the man, the Lord, lowercase l, the Lord of the country, he was the the, not even the true ruler of the country. He was just the ruler of the, the food being dispersed during this time of famine. Um, he was still technically a slave, um, but he was who the, the brothers had met because he was uh, in control of the food distribution during this famine, and they called him the Lord, lowercase l-o-r-d. Now, when we look at the word Lord in the Bible, we can see that, uh, or not even now, but so by that we can see that the word Lord uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a reference to God. It is a title, uh, if you will. It's it's kind of like saying the president or the governor. It's a title. The president isn't the president's name. That's just his title. Uh, there are lords of countries. Uh, there was, uh, uh, again, Joseph was being referred to as a lord. And then there is the lord of lords, and that is, um, that is God, right? That is Jesus. Hold on a second. Uh, Let's go to this. So I looked up some other verses that are kind of that it, you know will break this up so that uh, they're not all one because you're you're going to find the words Lord Jesus Christ like I said in different variations in Acts chapter two verse thirty six. Uh, it says therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him him being Jesus both Lord, the ruler, and Christ the Messiah. Uh, this so so if if you know, if, if Lord and Christ, if Lord was the first name and Christ was the last name, then this would make absolutely no sense. There, there are three different designators and names for the same being. And, and we'll get into the other two here in a minute. Uh, but um, we have, uh, it made, uh, God made him both Lord and Christ. Okay, so ruler, um, 
of supreme authority and Christ, which is uh, uh, the Messiah. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. Uh, Christ is the Messiah. And then it says, this Jesus whom you crucified. So this whole thing is talking about Jesus. Uh, let's see. So then 1 Timothy 6, 15, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Okay, so this is a title. He is the supreme authority. He is the supreme ruler over all of the other rulers in the world. He is the king, the the highest power um, of the kings. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So we have Lord, Lord being the title. Okay, then we have Jesus. Um, we have Jesus being in the uh, the Greek uh, Jehoshua. I'm sorry. Um, that would be in the Hebrew. Or am I backwards on that one? Uh, we have Jehoshua, which uh, means G uh, Jesus saves. He, um, or he who saves. Not Jesus saves. Jehoshua means he who saves. And so actually we can see this name in Joshua uh, back in the Old Testament as well. Joshua, Jehoshua. Uh, it, and it points to um, to the name of Jesus. Uh, Joshua is he who saves. He saved Israel. He took him across in, um, into the promised land uh, because Moses could no longer take him over there. Um, we have uh, Yeshua. Obviously, there was no no J's in the Hebrew, and this is an argument that a lot of um, people will say, well, there's no J's, so how can it be Jesus? Uh, it was Yeshua, uh, Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh is the name of of God. And so when you see the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in the Old Testament, that is referring to Yahweh. That is his proper personal name, Yahweh. Uh, Jehovah, Jehovah Shua, you can see um, uh, Jehovah Shua is I am in the Hebrew, um, to be or the becoming one. Um, so you might have seen, so when, when you see capital O, cap, uh, I'm sorry, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord, all uppercase letters, that is uh, referring to the proper name of Jesus. And you would have seen uh, this um, as, a, as a reference to Yahweh. You might have seen YHVH or JHVH um, in, uh, you know, you've seen it uh, in writings or in books or, I mean, it's a really popular thing to have on, you know, shirts and hats and things like that right now. Um, <coughs> the YHVH that, and the JHVH, those are, uh, that's what's called the Tetragrammaton. And what it is, is um, it's not sure exactly what vowels, whether it was Jehovah or um, Yahweh. Uh, we can put the vowels in there, and um, that's how you would get either one. But it's not sure what, exactly what the vowels were, uh, because the Jews wouldn't write them. The Jews would not write um, the proper name of God. They would not write Yahweh. That's why they wrote Y-H-W-H. Because they felt the name of the Lord was so sacred that they did not want to be charged with using the Lord's name in vain. In fact, if you were to go back and do some uh, history work, you would find that when the scribes were writing uh, the Bible, uh, when they were writing on their scrolls, when they were um, uh, copying the scrolls, copying the different, what well, we know them now as books uh, of the Bible onto new scrolls, anytime that they would um, go to write the name of God, the proper name of God, Yahweh, whenever they would go to write that on a, on a, uh, the piece of the parchment or whatever it was that they were writing it on, they would use a new pen and new ink, and they would have to wash, they would have to bathe, and wear new, fresh, clean clothes just to, just to write that word or just to write that name. That is how sacred that they took this name. And it's amazing how today, um, you know, it's just a swear word. You will hear people just throw it out. OMG. I mean, all the time. We have, How bad is it that we have, you know, um, acronym OMG, OMG for, you know, shortening it up. Um, and it's so widely used that it's it's just common in society today. Sadly, even in the um, kids' church today, I heard that thrown out by one of the kids in the church uh, no less than five times, at least five times. And I'm pretty sure I had a couple other say it too. Uh, it's just something, and it's I can't fault them for it because you know that they didn't just pick it up on their own because these kids are like eight, nine, and ten. 
Um, this is something <coughs> that they had to have been getting from adults that were saying these things. And so it's gotten used as a swear word. This is the using of the Lord's name in vain, the thing that the uh, Jews were so afraid to use that they wouldn't even put the vowels in um, in the in the name. They just used the consonants, Y-H-V-H or J-H-V-H, instead of Yehovah, Jehovah, or um, uh, Yahweh. So we have God, uh, which is the divine, um, the, the supreme divinity, the Theos. In this case, this is the Theos. In the Old Testament, it was the Elohim, uh, the plural, uh, showing the, the triune Godhead. We have the Lord, which is the title, uh, the uh, supreme authority or the master. We have Jesus, Jesus being the uh, proper name. That was his name when he was born. That was the name that Mary and Joseph gave to Jesus or gave to the baby was Jesus. That was his name. And Christ uh, in the Greek is Christos. Uh, the translation is Messiah. <coughs> so, um, and, and that's what that is. That is the sovereign, the Messiah, the, the one who is going to uh, redeem um, humanity, essentially. So what we have is God the Theos uh, and the Lord. We have the master, the, the supreme authority. We have, uh, we have God and of the supreme authority, the master, Jesus, the Messiah. And like I said, if you go back and you look, um, uh, let me pull up a couple of these verses again. If you go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 36, you can see that it says, uh, Therefore let all of the house of Israel know for certain that God, the Theos, has made him, that would be Jesus, both the Lord, the um, supreme authority or the master, and the Messiah, the one who has come to save, the one who has come to redeem. This Jesus, again, the name, the proper name of Jesus, whom you crucified. So uh, this is really a crash course. I mean, um, I, I kind of hope that it helps. I know that maybe I'm not the best teacher when it comes to some of these uh, things, but uh, hopefully this kind of helps to clear this up again for some of you. Like, you know, if you get it or you had it before, great. Um, I just I know that me personally, I didn't get it a lot of the time. Um, the words were interchangeable. Uh, you know, we would refer to uh, the Lord or God or Jesus or Christ all as the same person or as the same name for the same person when they all have uh, different meanings in their original um, language. Again, we have the Theos, we have the um, Supreme Authority or the Master, we have the proper name, the Yahweh, that is the Jesus, and Christ is the Messiah. Um, just real quick then, I have from BlueLetterBible.com, uh, they have a program on there where you can take free classes from the Lancaster Bible College, one of the classes that I took was um, in basic Bible doctrine unit two, um, the names of God. And you know what, if you're interested in this stuff, you might as well just uh, uh, go check it out. It's not the, it's not going to hurt you to go and get a little bit deeper, a uh, deeper knowledge and it's free. Um, and uh, the, the classes are broke down into, you know, 15 to 30 minute video lessons. Um, so it's really easy to just kind of sit down and, you know, with a pen and a paper and, uh, and write these things down. And then there's lots of other materials and resources on there that you can print off. That's what I did here. So what we have is the names of God. We have, um, obviously we talked about Elohim <coughs> first used in Genesis chapter one, one, um, used 2,599 times throughout the Bible. Um, we have Yahweh, which is, uh, Jehovah first used in Genesis, uh, ta two, four, that is used 6,519 times. It is the promised proper name. It means it means both Lord and Master. Um, by Jewish tradition, this name was too holy to pronounce right. Therefore, they just wrote the four letters without any vowels, uh, Y-H-W-H, -H, which we talked about that. Um, by the third century AD, this was, and this is something I forgot until I'm reading this, the Jews stopped saying the name all together uh, because they're afraid of violating the fourth commandment. Um, 
which prohibits misusing or taking the Lord's name in vain. They did not want to do that. And, and like I said, it was such a, um, uh, um, a supreme name. They held it to such high regard and high esteem in the Old Testament that the scribes would use new ink, new pens, and completely wash and bathe before they wrote that word. Imagine having a scripture uh, or going to write a, a passage um, that used the, the, the Yahweh uh, many times throughout that scripture. <laughs> How many baths you would have to take. Also, just of note, um, they took this to such a highest, uh, they, they took such high regard to um, copying the scriptures, copying the text down, um, and this will just shoot um, a big hole in a lot of people's philosophy that the Bible has been mistranslated, it's been misused, it's been carelessly, you know, uh, copied. Um, it, that is not true at all. The scribes uh, would um, throw a scroll away if they made a mistake. They wouldn't erase, they wouldn't cross it out. They held the scriptures as holy and regarded them. They had such high regard for the scriptures that if they messed up, they would throw the old scroll away and start all over. Um, the scrolls were limited to 35 feet in, uh, in length. And um, imagine getting to the end of your 35 feet. You're at the last verse. Of course, the verses are, um, are modern uh, additions to it to help us to be able to find and locate scripture and reference scripture better. That was the, the, the scribes in the original um, text. Uh, they did not have chapters and verses. That is something that we put in so that we could easier, uh, more easily reference the text. The translators put those in. Um, but imagine being to the last sentence of a book um, at the end of this 35 uh, foot scroll and you made a mistake and you threw it out. That was how holy uh, and with how much regard they um, they took the scriptures. So, um, yeah, that was just a, an interesting little aside. We have uh, El Elyon, and I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, the Most High God, you can see uh, Adonai used 434 times. First time used was in Genesis chapter 15 as the Lord and Master. We have El Shaddai, which is the Lord God Almighty. Um, one that was used only once, and it was used by Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, was Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Uh, the, the backstory there, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, Abraham was on his way to sacrifice his son Isaac to uh, God, because that's what he said to do. Abraham had the faith that God was going to provide in one way or another, and, and we don't really know what it was that he believed. I kind of am actually of the belief that um, Abraham had enough faith in God to do what he said because Abraham was promised that he was going to make, uh, that God was going to make Abraham the father of many nations, right? So the only way that that was going to happen was through his only son, uh, his only legitimate son, Isaac. His other son uh, was born to his wife's um, uh, servant, maid servant. Uh, and it was not by God's design. God said, you will have a child with your wife and I will make a, uh, many nations out of you. I'll make you the father of many nations. Um, and at this point, at the point when Isaac was born, it was uh, physically impossible for uh, Abraham and Sarah to even have babies. Uh, Abraham was 100 years old. So uh, at the time of his birth and at the time uh, that he took him up to sacrifice him, uh, he would be 125. No chance without God of even having another baby. But this shows the faith in God. I, I truly believe that he thought that um, that God was going to resurrect Isaac from the dead. Uh, and this was just a test of his faith. Um, and what happened was God provided the ram caught in the bush in the thicket for the sacrifice. Uh, because of Abraham's faith. Abraham is talked about in the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews, I believe it's 11, uh, is the faith chapter he's talked about a lot in there. Abraham is also mentioned in the book of James, in James chapter 2, uh, with faith without works being dead. Uh, chapter 2, verses 14 through 20, uh, through, well, through the end of the chapter, I think it's through 26. Um, Abraham is mentioned there as being a man of faith. He was justified by his works. His works was following uh, what God told him to do. Um, and this, so this was an interesting one. This is something that only occurs in this one verse. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will 
uh, provide. There are others um, that uh, we're just, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are others that we'll use only uh, once or maybe twice or just a handful of times. Um, but again, I just, this was something that <clears throat> it's just weird how things come up several times, uh, you know, in a few days time, um, in some of the studies that I've done in this study as well, because explaining this is something that I'm, you know, uh, that I did some study on for this inductive Bible study in the book of James and then listening to, um, commentaries and other lessons. Um, it just, yeah. I thought it would be interesting and I just wanted to share it. So hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully this all makes sense now and you can uh, understand the difference between God, Lord, Jesus, and Christ. Remember, uh, God is a supreme divinity. That is his divine name, uh, the, the Theos in the Greek, uh, the Elohim in the Hebrew, um, Lord being the supreme master, uh, the, uh, the supreme authority. Uh, the, the, he is the Lord of the Lords. He is the authority over all of the earthly lords. Jesus being the proper name, uh, Yahweh, uh, and then Christ as the Messiah. Uh, so that's it for this, I don't know, this little lesson. Uh, it's not really a Bible study. It's not really, doesn't qualify for the nugget of scripture, but it was something that I thought would be interesting. And hopefully this, um, this clears things up. And um, yeah, new thirst addiction uh, study is out. Uh, for this week and uh, we'll be out next Sunday as well. I try to put those out every Sunday. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare next lesson. Um, and as always, if you're somebody you know would like to request the Bible, would like to request prayer, need help finding um, an addiction or recovery program, need help finding a church, um, feel free to contact me. The contact information will be in the description below. You can go to the website www.soberforchrist and fill out a request form there. Uh, you can go to my email um, send me an email requesting a Bible. There's a Calvary Chapel Church Finder on the website, and there is an AA Meeting Finder on the website, and some other useful resources. So, again, hopefully this, um, hopefully you guys found this informative. Hopefully, you know this explained uh, some things to some people. Uh, maybe those that uh, just didn't quite have a, a solid understanding of this and of uh, the names of God. Um, and um, yeah, with that. We're going to go ahead and close this off and have a great day. Stay grounded, stay in God's word, and God bless. Have a great day.